I just watched the Monday Night Raw episode from the night after Fatal 4 Way, June 21st. And I think WWE uh, and WWE Raw mainly, and SmackDown as well, I should say, has uh, been really good lately. They do this every summer, it seems. They step it up. They did it in 2008. I remember it was a great wrestling summer. It was pretty good last year with SummerSlam topping it off as one of the best SummerSlams I have ever seen. And Raw is and SmackDown. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of feuds, a lot of wrestlers involved in storylines, and a lot of X factors around with Kane, the NXT. And apparently, Bret Hart has been fired from uh, WWE as a general manager. Uh, it's pretty hard right now, and that's what I like. You don't really know what's going on. You don't know anything about the politics. You know the politics exists right now in WWE. You got Vince McMahon, you got Bret Hart, you got NXT, you got Cena, you got Randy Orton. You don't really know. It's just a shade of gray. Everything. It's not that bipolar that you know that this guy is against this guy and they're gonna feud. It's just a massive zone that is a shade of gray. Uh, like I said. Uh, Randy Orton, of course, has interests of the title. He is involved with the Miss uh, and now Edge as well, from what we saw on Raw. And he also wants the title. And he's also got NXT to take his stand for and against. And he's doing bo both. And same with Sheamus. He is a heel, but still, he's willing to 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 gang up against NXT, like we saw on Fatal Four Way. I think Fatal Four Way, on a whole, was it was a pretty good pay per view. I, I think WWE they they really stepped it up the first four pay-per-views of this year. Royal Rumble was good, Elimination Chamber was really good, WrestleMania was very good, Extreme Rules were, were very good. Over the Limit, pretty good, not that good. Over the Limit, a little better. Uh, they built it up pretty well. Uh, but the, I think they need a bigger pay-per-view in June. N not to have this four pay-per-views that you don't really mean that much. You need I mean the big ones, the big pay-per-views. Now Survivor Series has gone as well. They need these big ones as the foundations in, the, in their pay-per-view industry. We'll see what happens and what will derive from all of this. What we do know, as I said, is that Bret Hart is gone, apparently, and that we got a new general manager that sends emails. And Michael Cole got mail several times this night, and he read them for us, and we, he announced the match of John Cena vs. Sheamus, Vince McMahon, being the enforcer of that match. So, and, and apparently this GM is going to be anonymous, and that's pretty interesting, and I, I, I like this. They do new things, they do, you don't really knew, no, that's what you want to know. I mean, for, for young kids, they, they just see what they get. And this is mainly for kids, but, but to, to attract the older viewers, I think they like more uh, uncertainty. They want to know answers, but for every answer they get, you get more questions. And that way you, you keep drawn into it, and you never really know everything. Because there is always something more to know. And right now, like I said, Vince McMahon, where is he in all of this NXT? I thought he might be, when he stepped into the ring, he, uh, uh, and he brought the NXT guys in there. And when they tipped the table over on John Cena, he didn't really seem to care. So I think, okay, so Vince McMahon is going to be the man behind all of this. He might even have been the guy who, who drove the limo, I thought, when he stepped into the ring and brought the guys in. But I'm not so sure about that right now because what happened, they attacked Vince McMahon. And that was really cool how they just started by standing behind him. Then they flanked him. Then they came closer and closer. And suddenly they were full circle around Vince McMahon and they beat him up. They, they they made it coming slowly, progressively. Unfortunately, for tonight, the crowd wasn't the best, uh, which, of course, diminishes the, the effect of it. And uh, the crowd was kind of tepid from the get-go, and so it wasn't the best of night that way. But still, it was a very good program, and, and well, we simply have to see. And I, I, it's very interesting to see because I think Wade Barrett, I don't believe he's going to be a champion, world champion that soon. And he might get a title shot in a paper, uh, triple triple threat match. But he, he got a lot of character. He's very good on the mic. And he is solid in the ring. So and I think that goes for most NXT guys. But Wade Barrett is the guy that really sticks out. Uh, and he seems very like a really authoritative figure and he's very adamant and very respectful in the way he acts. He seems very controlled, very cool. 
so I mean, compared to Michael Torber, who's the exact opposite. Now Michael Torber as well is very good on the mic. That's his absolute strength, I believe. But still, Wade Barrett is the whole package guy. So we'll simply see Sheamus, and really not certain who's going to wrestle him at Money in the Bank for the title. If it's going to be a title defense for him there, what really astonished me throughout this night that I don't believe there were any mention of money in the bank whatsoever I believe the pay-per-view is could be five weeks away now maybe five rows in between I don't remember what date money in the bank is could be four or five if it if it is five it's okay but if it's only four weeks to the pay-per-view then they gotta build from the get-go right after Fatal 4-Way it's focused right on to, to the next pay-per-view and they didn't even mention uh, I didn't see an entire infomercial about it, they didn't make any commercial about tickets, no mention of any title matches, any matches whatsoever, not anything about what concept the pay-per-view is going to be. Uh, to me that's strange. You need to, to build as quick as possible for the next pay-per-view to create interest in it because that's what some of the critics against Fatal 4-Way was, that you, you had too few matches and that's not the problem to me because it's about how you build those matches that are on the card. We also got Jericho versus Evan Bourne, that was a very good match, uh, at least the first half of it, but then kind of slowed down when he was supposed to go home with the match, Evan Bourne. Uh, but still, you need to build because the matches on the pay per view is supposed to mean something, and on this pay per view, a lot of people complain that the matches didn't mean that much. I believe still the Fatal 4 ways were really well built. Uh, but for instance, R-Truth versus um, The Miss for the title. It wasn't that much of a build up to that. Kofi Kingston versus Drew McIntyre. Uh, that had some build up to it, but it felt two or three weeks ago like the feud and the storyline was over. And then they picked it up one week before the pay-per-view again. They should have gone with it all the way because I thought when Drew McIntyre lost his match, I believe it was one week after over the limit against Kofi Kingston, you believe, okay, this feud is over. But then they picked it up again. Instead, they could have gone full force with it. Uh, or perhaps built well, for Drew McIntyre versus Matt Hardy instead at, at the Fatal 4 because that match has a lot of meaning to it due to their feud. It will also be interesting to see SmackDown this upcoming Friday. <laughs> Personally, I'm sick of Theodore Long. Drew McIntyre was the winner of the match. I don't get why he, he didn't count. Because that uh, to me, Theodore Long now is the bad guy. Drew McIntyre had Kofi Kingston pinned fair and square in the ring. He didn't cheat. He did it all fair in the ring. Still, he refused to count. Then you have Matt Hardy come into the ring, which should have been a blatant disqualification. Theodore Long did nothing about it. And then he counted out uh, McIntyre in the match. And... and I can't sympathize with that whatsoever. And now I'm a McIntyre fan, but still, uh, if you're going to have a good guy versus a bad guy, the good guy really has to be a good guy. And the bad guy really has to be a bad guy. And to me right now, Theodore Long is a bad, bad, bad guy. Um, so, uh, WWE stepping it up from the Raw viewer's choice. Some people said that that's three-hour show was pretty bad and they only remember one thing the NXT invasion but if you ask me I believe that actually was planned they did if you do a pretty poor show and pretty low profile show and then you have this huge boom and you have one you want people to talk about this boom then the low pro, low profile show explains itself because if you want to have people talk about one thing that thing really needs to stand out explains itself Feel free to comment. Have a nice day.